Welcome back, All Sports West New York on St. Patrick's Day and Jay Skursky in the studio. You know, it occurred to me, Jay, as I booked you for the show, you know, two Polish guys on St. Patrick's Day, but what did you do for St. Patrick's Day? I didn't do a darn thing. My wife walked in the parade and I was going to bring the baby if it were a little warmer, but it was, uh, it was a little chilly. You have a baby? We, we do, yes, he just turned one. I just, can you believe I just, that? Yeah, well, believe uh, you've heard me say this, I'll say it one more time, fittingly <laughs> on St. Patrick's Day, that kid's been photographed more than the Kennedys, <laughs> That's okay? Good, yeah. But let's go to the Buffalo Bills. Sure. Um, the Buffalo Bills, they have been very active in free agency. Um, and Rex Ryan, the, the latest signing is, and as we're, we're as we're talking about this, I mean, we're, you know, they're gonna they're gonna just uh, address their tight end situation. We assume Clay from Miami is, is the guy, but uh, Percy Percy Harvin from the Jets, who has been it's been well documented, has been a pariah in the locker room. Uh, every team he's been at has been happy to see him go. What's he gonna bring to the Buffalo Bills? Well, I think, you know, the first thing that he's going to bring is a presence in the slot. I think that's the position that he's going to come in. He's going to be the third wide receiver joining Sammy Watkins and Robert Woods. And listen, when Harvin is healthy, he has proven that he can be an explosive player. That's, that's part of the problem, though, is that he hasn't been able to stay healthy right. the last couple of years. And the other part of it is, is it's only a one-year contract. There's minimal risk involved with a one-year contract. If it doesn't work out, they can move on. They've got some insurance with Chris Hogan, who had a pretty nice season last year. So if Hogan comes in and, and outperforms Percy Harvin or Harvin, as you alluded to, proves to be a problem in the locker room, they can move on from him without a lot of uh, cap problems and things of that nature. But, you know, what's he bring? He brings that explosiveness. And, and the other part of it is he spent time with Rex Ryan, as you mentioned there, eight games last year with the Jets. So obviously the Bills coach felt comfortable enough to bring him in and comfortable enough with what he was going to give them in the locker room that he wasn't concerned about that. And I think that's important. I think if Harvin were to be signed off the street and had no relationship at all with Rex Ryan with this coaching staff, it would be more of a risk. Obviously, the, the, the guys here, Rex Ryan, the wide receivers coach who had him last year in New York, have a level, a level of comfort with him that they don't feel he, that he will disrupt whatever chemistry that the, the Bills are working toward. Well, you know, I had an interesting argument with a friend of mine Friday night in a, an adult establishment <laughs> about chemistry in the locker room. And this individual felt that it wasn't important, that they've, they've had great chemistry, but they haven't had great teams. So you bring in Harvin, you bring in LaShawn McCoy, whose nickname Shady, <laughs> is because of his sometimes moody disposition. And, you bring, and you, you bring in Incognito, who is, he is the poster child for bad locker room behavior. I guess Rex Ryan, it's all about what they do on the field and not what they do in the locker room. Well, and Doug Whaley, too. Doug Whaley has shown a, a propensity to take on players like that, perceived character risks. That hasn't worried him in the past. And I think the biggest thing here is that winning cures all. If this team is able to win, if they're able to make a playoff run, I think they'll be able to overcome the chemistry problems. They have strong leadership on both sides of the ball with Kyle Williams on defense, with Fred Jackson on offense, that I think they, they're comfortable enough with the leadership structure that they have in place inside the locker room to sort of put up with maybe some of those off the field type of distractions. Now, this can go south in a hurry. If, if this team comes out and, and starts off two and four, and it looks like they're gonna miss the playoffs for a 16th straight season, that's when those locker room problems and those locker room issues can tend to creep up. We saw it last year, even in a year that they went nine and seven, there were some issues. Mike Williams had requested a trade. Marquise Goodwin wasn't happy in his role. CJ Spiller, you know, constantly had to deal with what was gonna happen after the year with his free agency. And was he happy with getting the ball enough? Especially offensively, it's very easy for that kind of thing to become divisive because guys want the ball. And you know, you look at the playmakers that this team has now, LaShawn McCoy, Sammy Watkins, Percy Harvin, uh, Robert Woods. These are all big personalities, maybe Watkins to a lesser extent, but they're all big personalities. They're all gonna want the ball. And if they don't get it enough, how does that, does that create a problem? It can, unless they're winning. If they're winning, then most of the time those guys are gonna find a way to stay happy. LaShawn well, McCoy, I mean, the, the Bills bring in statistically one of the top three running backs over the last three years in the NFL. You think he's still got the same juice he had uh, two years ago in Philadelphia? 
Well, even on his down year last year, it was 1,300 yards. That was a better year than C.J. Spiller's ever had in the NFL. So we talk about LaShawn McCoy having a down year, and I asked him about it. He kind of bristled and said, you know, I still finished third in the league in rushing, and he did. And, and to his credit, I think he's one of the two or three best at, at the position. You know, he's at the age, 27 now, where traditionally running backs have hit their peak. Has McCoy done that? He, he's going to be hungry now because he was traded to prove that he hasn't hit his peak. And the Bills are acquiring a player who I think is going to come in with, uh, uh, you know, he's going to be hungry to prove people wrong. And I think that's good. That's what you want. You want a motivated player like that. So he's got, he's got a lot to prove this year. You know, do I think he's got five great years left in him? Probably not. But I do think he's got two or three. And that's what the, that's what the Bills are looking at in terms of a playoff window. Fred Jackson, almost out the door last week. Uh, Tim Graham did an excellent job from Buffalo News reporting just how close he came to being out the door and the fact that he was retained. Uh, Tim was on the show last week, and we said there's no guarantee. Fred, they kept Fred last week. Doesn't mean he's going to be here come game one. How important? Do you think Fred still has a role to play with this team? I do. And, you know, Fred has defied the odds his entire career. You know, he was Marshawn Lynch. He outperformed Marshawn Lynch. He outperformed C.J. Spiller. So I'm never going to bet against Fred Jackson. Now, Salary-wise, it is a little higher, and the Bills do have the option. If they were to move on from him, there wouldn't be any cap ramifications from that. But I think, I firmly believe that if you take him to camp, he's going to find himself a job on this team. That's just the type of player he is. And like I said, I'm not going to bet against him. And I think you can't do much better in the NFL for a third down, pass catching, blocking running back than Fred Jackson. I mean, he excels at that. I think he caught 60 passes last year. And then outside of that, what he means inside the locker room in terms of being a leader and a captain, and then what he means to the community. I, that, that's a smaller part of it, but I don't think you can completely discount it, and I think a bi that's a big reason why he's still here, because the, the, the ownership, I think Terry and Kim Pagula, recognized the potential ramifications of moving on from a player like that. Now, I feel like this is, they're doing Fred a favor here. If they take him to, no, I shouldn't say they're doing him a favor, but they're doing right by him. Take him to camp and let him work for a job. And if he doesn't earn it, if they feel he's not the best, I think Fred would be the first to tell you I'm okay with that and, I, and I'm okay with moving on. But I'm glad that they're, that they're giving him that opportunity. I feel like he should go out. If, it, if he is going to go out, it's, it should be fighting for a job. Well, you know, Tim maintained he felt the New England Patriots would have been the first team in line to sign him. Uh, it, they signed Chandler, so I guess... Should tell you a lot about what Fred Jackson is thought of around right, the league, right? Right, yeah. Well, Bill Belichick, he always finds a place for those veteran players and what they bring, what, what they add to his formula of success. And like I said, I mean, is, is Fred going to be a 200 or 300 down uh, carry guy? I don't think so. You know, that's not his role anymore. That's what they brought LaShawn McCoy in. But the outside stuff, the blocking, the pass catching, and the leadership, I think all factors in to why you want a guy like Fred Jackson well, on your team. In the past two seasons, have shown us it's very tough to, to play 16 games as a running back in the NFL. So, hey, we're going to take a break. When we come back, basketball with Jay Skirsky right after this.